Today we're going to be busting a product photography myth. I'm going to be showing you what it's like to shoot with constant lights versus strobes. Now, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love strobes for product photography. However, I get that not everyone has the budget for a strobe. Or maybe you're just a beginner and strobes might overwhelm you. So we've been kindly gifted a constant light from iFootage. I'm going to show you a scene using this light versus the strobe. And also I'll throw in a few little tips on how you can change your settings to get the same kind of results. Let's start off with strobes just to get it out of the way. So this is my go-to setup. I I often do this style of scene for a lot of the clients that I work with. I've just got the product sitting on a block and I'm doing a one light setup. So I've positioned my key light on the right hand side. Again, this is just using one light and I'm using a bare bulb because we want to work with hard lighting today. So what hard lighting means is that you've got harsh shadows. And then if I need to lift some light into the opposite side of the scene, I'm just going to use a piece of foam board and that's just going to bounce some light back into those darker areas in those dark shadows. So for my camera settings using the strobe, I I'm gonna choose the settings that I would often choose for a product photography shoot. My f-stop is sitting at f14 right now because I wanna keep that aperture really high so we get a lot of detail. We want this to be really crisp in focus scene. For my shutter speed, I'm at one over 160. The reason I'm doing that is because it's the perfect sync speed for strobes. And then for my ISO, I'm keeping that all the way down at 100. I wanna rely on the strobes for my lighting output. So I'm just gonna take a shot. I've already set the power output for the strobes and this is the results that we have with the strobe. For my power at the moment, I'm sitting at half power plus 0.7. So I'm essentially using half the amount of power that that strobe actually has. Now, the good thing about strobes is that I have full control. I can rely on the strobes themselves. I'm not using any of this ambient lighting right now. Now, quick little disclaimer, we do have video lights on at the moment for this video. So you're just gonna have to ignore some of the other stands that you might see in the background. We've got one over here and a few at the front. You might see that at times that has nothing to do with what I'm telling you about today. So I just wanted to make that little disclaimer. So this is the results using the strobe. It's clean, it's really bright. I'll just show you without the foam board as well, just so you can see the difference. Now, if I were to turn those strobes off, this is where you can see the power of the strobe and how much flexibility you have. I'm gonna turn those strobes off and I'm gonna take a shot. I should have an almost black image and I do because I'm relying heavily on the output of the strobe. I'm controlling pretty much the entire final result. Now I'm gonna incorporate the constant light that we were gifted by iFootage and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use. Now strobes obviously comes with its own complications and technical skills as well. You need to connect your strobe with a trigger to your camera. You need to adjust the output based on your camera settings and what you're trying to achieve. You need to ensure that the strobes are on the same channel and you also need to give each strobe its own identity. So you need to give it its own group. So when you're first starting that can be really overwhelming to a beginner and if you're shooting on the manual settings rather than TTL which is essentially auto it reads in fractions which again can be really overwhelming for a beginner. It can be a really challenging tool to use in your product photography if you're very new. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trigger off because we don't need that anymore because we're using a constant light. I'm also going to take the strobe off, turn it off, and I'm gonna replace it with our constant light. Now for this example, I will have to turn off our video light. So things are gonna get a little bit dark in a second. So it's really cool. It comes with its own little case so you can keep things organized. You've got the power adapter and a little hook so you can hook the power adapter onto your stand, which is very handy. So you don't have cords lying around everywhere. This plug just goes into the bottom of it and then that will connect to your constant light as well. Now, the one thing I love about this is that it's so small and compact. Look at that sizing in comparison to the strobe. So this is incredibly heavy, whereas this is so lightweight and it's, it's gonna be really easy to move around. Another feature that these constant lights have, depending on where you are shooting, whether you're on location or if you're at home, it has two different options for the power supply. So you could connect it with uh, USB-C or you could connect it with the V-mount batteries that it is supplied with. So it's just your general cord, you plug it straight in, turn it on in the PowerPoint and off you go. Another feature that it has is it's silent cooling. So it's very, very quiet in comparison to a strobe. A strobe will make a lot of sound, whereas this is really quiet. So great for BTS. Maybe you need to create an ASMR video or you need silence in the room for whatever you might be filming or creating. So that's a really cool feature, very quiet. Another feature, which I'll show you in a second that I really love that strobes don't have, unless you work with other tools, it's that this specific constant light has temperature control. So I can make it 
a cold light or I can make it a warm light. And another cool thing is that the output's basically all with a dial. So you can just turn it to make it dark or turn it up to make it brighter. So super easy, super user friendly. I'm gonna take a shot. I haven't changed any of my settings. All I've done is replace the strobe with this constant light. And it's also in the same position. So I haven't moved it. Now, what you are going to see is a black photo because we don't have enough light for my current camera setting. So as I mentioned before, I'm sitting at a general setting that I would for all of my product shoots. It's sitting at F14 because that's generally what I shoot at for my style of work. Now my style is very bold, it's very bright. So how do I overcome this obstacle that I haven't got enough light source? So the first thing that I would do if I didn't want to compromise on my f-stop or if I didn't want to compromise on the ISO, I would start playing around with my shutter speed. However, if we're going to do that, we do not want to touch the camera. So I highly suggest that you put your camera on a tripod and you use a program called capture one to tether and you can take the shot from your computer because what's going to happen as soon as we start lowering that shutter speed so it's a lot slower we're going to get motion blur naturally if we're moving around and naturally we, we've got just a general shake if we're holding things so if we go lower than say 60 for our shutter speed we're going to get a bit of blur and things are going to look wishy-washy and messy and we don't want that we want we want crisp i highly recommend putting it on the tripod and let's start bringing in some more of that ambient light so i've just put my settings down to 1 over 20. now again this is a very slow shutter speed especially for what i do do not want to touch this camera at all so I've just taken the shot with Capture One. Again, it's still really dark. So if we wanted to, we could keep making the shutter speed a lot slower. We don't have anything that's moving in the shot, so I could decrease it again. So right now I'm at one over four, and that is a very slow shutter speed. I can hear how long it's taking to take that shot. Motion blur makes me a little bit nervous, so I am just gonna bring that shutter speed back up. The next thing I'm gonna do instead is it down my f-stop a little bit so i'm going to bring that f-stop down to say f11 and take a shot as you can see it's still a bit too dark so the next thing that i can do is introduce some of my iso so i'm going to bump that up to iso 250 still a bit too dark so i'm going to keep bumping that up until it's the right exposure that seems pretty similar so that's sitting at iso 800 if this was going on socials wouldn't be a problem at all. Let's say the editing style has grain in it. That wouldn't be a problem at all either. So naturally it would have a little bit of grain there because that's what's gonna happen. The more you increase your ISO, the more grain you're gonna introduce to your photo. So those results look pretty similar. If anything, it's just a little bit too warm. So I'm just gonna cool it off a little bit. I could also do this on camera, but why not do it on there if I have the ability to do it? They look pretty similar to me. So let's have a look. Let's five star that one. And then let's have a look at our strobe one. Very, very similar results. One is obviously just a little bit cooler than the other. Might just fix that. Uh, another really cool feature about these constant lights is that there is an app that you can control the temperature with as well. This one isn't an RGB. So RGB means that you can change it to any color, whereas this one is just controlling the warm to cold temperatures on the light. So you can control it by an app, which is really cool. So if you didn't want to compromise on your ISO, we can start playing with our shutter speed instead. So I'm going to bring my ISO back down. Just if your main priority is to reduce grain, bring it back down. You don't need to, we can compromise in other ways. So I'm going to bring that back down to say ISO 320. And now I'm just going to play around with my shutter speed. Cause again, I can take the shot on the computer. So I'm going to bring my shutter speed down to dangerous territory, but we're not touching the camera. We're not, we're not touching the camera to take the shot. We're not touching the tripod. We're going to shoot using the Capture One program. Okay, so I'm back down at one over four for my shutter speed. I'm gonna take a shot and I can hear it. It's very slow and it's too bright. So we can bring some of that speed back. Let's go one over six, still a little bit too bright. So that tells me that we could probably decrease our ISO all the way back to 100. The thing about constant lights and product photography in general, it's just about figuring out how to overcome an obstacle and playing with your settings. Usually when you adjust one setting, you have to adjust the others. They all work with each other. So we're back down to ISO 100 and we're sitting at one over six for the shutter speed. And again, that looks like a pretty similar shot. I'm quite happy with that. The only thing that I would do is make sure that I have each individual bottle in focus and bring them together in Photoshop just to make sure that they're both 
crisp. Now the other cool thing that I love about constant lights is that if we needed to quickly switch to video because a lot of brands utilize video and UGC these days, if you needed to quickly switch to video, you have your constant light already set up. So we'll just switch it over to video pretty similar outputs. It looks great. It looks exactly like how the photo would. So that's how you can get consistency if you need the photos and videos to align too. But that was super easy. That took us less than like five minutes to put together that. Um, another little disclaimer, we have a photo shoot going on to the right of us. So if you see pops of light, like right now, that is the girls shooting something with strobes. It's just what we use. So it's not the constant light popping, just so you know. Now, another way to increase the power of your constant light is to use a reflective modifier. This one actually comes with the kit. So you get one of these when you buy the light. Now with a reflector, it has this silver interior. So what's gonna happen is the light gets trapped inside and it pushes it out. So it intensifies the output when it comes out because it's trapped, it's got nowhere else to go. Another feature with the reflective modifier is that you can control the spread of light with it. So you'll see when we put this on that naturally it's going to make our background a little bit darker because the light can't escape out the side right now it's bare so this light's spreading everywhere whereas this is a bit more controlled so if you did need to control the spread this is how you would do that as well so this is going to make our photo brighter but our background darker as you can see now the products are too bright and the background is darker so that's one way that you can control the background color too so i'm just going to increase our shutter speed to 1 over 15 we'll see the difference there's a huge difference in the output of that light when you add that modifier on there it's crazy how much brighter it actually gets so that's the shot with the modifier again the background's really dark you could shine another light at the background if you wanted to change the color or if your intention was to make the background darker that's even better. You can easily do that with a modifier. So that comes with it. Another modifier I wanna talk about that we were gifted is this little soft box that fits directly onto the constant light. Now for these constant lights, they're not gonna fit your traditional Bowens mount. So all of the modifiers that I've got for my strobes will not fit this, they'll be too big. So this one is the perfect size for it and it attaches the same way. So I'm just gonna show you what it's like using this soft box and it easily clips and unclips too. So you can fold this down with constant lights. The one thing that you need to remember is that your constant lights are going to get hot. So before you touch your modifiers, I recommend you turn them off because these are naturally gonna get really hot the longer they're sitting on there. Now there's a little button underneath here. So that's how you release a modifier too. So this is not gonna go anywhere at all unless you release it using that little button. So let's just add our softbox to this now. Pop it on and twist and you twist until you hear the click. And again, it's not gonna go anywhere until you pull that lever. So you could keep the modifier open like this uh, if you don't wanna soften the light too much or you could put on the white fabric that it comes with. So this is gonna create diffusion and it's gonna soften that light even further. So that might be the style of photo that you're going for. So this just attaches to the edges. It's got Velcro, so super easy to install. And this is if you wanted soft shadows rather than the hard shadows that we were working with before. If your style is more soft or uh, maybe the product that you're using is a bit glary, you can use something like this. So we'll pop that back on and we'll take a shot just so you can see the difference between using between soft light and hard light. So it has decreased the brightness as well. So that's what the diffusion is gonna do. It's that you're actually gonna lose some power with the diffusion in front. So what you can do is just increase that ISO again. Looks pretty good to me. We're kind of back to where we were, but we've now got softer shadows. And your lights aren't stuck in the mud, like I say on all of my video shoots and my photo shoots that you can move your lights around to achieve different looks. So I could bring this more to the front and we get more of a brighter spread of light over the products. You could bring it more towards the back and have more of a backlight and see how easy it is for me just to move this around and take a shot. I could do that with one arm, it's so light. It's just about working with your settings, working with your tools, knowing how to control what you do have. But I think this is a really good beginner tool to have. It's actually a lot more affordable than a strobe. Don't get me wrong. I think there's a time and place for strobes, but I too actually learned using constant lights and I used constant lights for years. There is no right or wrong way with product photography. It's honestly just about how you utilize the tools that you have to achieve the results that you wanna get.
So these are the two results using the strobe and the constant light that was so kindly gifted by iFootage today. To be fair, I think these are pretty close results. I would give both of these happily to a client and I don't think that they would even know what I've used to achieve that specific image. If you do want to explore these products, I'm going to leave all of the details in the caption. I'll leave all of the links. Definitely ask any questions that you may have in the comments too and we really hope you enjoyed this video.